Hello and welcome to the Live Life Golden Show. This is episode 62, Get Better at Manifesting and Why It Hasn't Been Working Until Now. This show is going to be a shifter. So if you've been feeling like you've got slow manifestation energies around you, we're going to shift the whole thing today. You're going to have these aha moments that are going to help you take your power back. Uh, last week was one of those, like I'm blaming Mercury retrograde. That's my new hashtag. It's Mercury's fault. I called last week episode 62 and I uploaded episode 60. So it was, it was bonkers and I couldn't get it to reload. So now episode 61, which was a fantastic episode about not letting other people's energies affect you is on Spotify in the correct place. However, in the beginning, I say it's episode 62, which clearly it is not, and this is episode 62. So I'm, you know, I'm just got to get it straight. And the thing about it is I don't really care. Like I've gotten to the point in my life where if I make mistakes, I'm very forgiving to myself. I'm very gentle with myself and I'm kind of laughing at myself because you know, we got to be human. We got to be human. We're in this experience to be human and to be vulnerable and to be honest and to show people we're not perfect and it's okay to not be perfect. So, and Mercury is in retrograde. And if you don't know what that means, um, you know, astrology, I'm kind of into it. I kind of listen to some things just because I like to know what the energies are doing. And the basis of Mercury retrograde in many people's lives is that it makes things go wonky. It makes the computer go wonky. It makes contracts go wonky. It makes communication wonky. And I listened to this really cool guy. His name is Minnow Pond. He does like tarot reading and he's cool. I just, I like his vibe. He's very intuitive and he always says things that are very, uh, that really connect with my life. I'm really not into tarot cards and all that, but I like guidance. Like I like hearing that my life is going to go great. And I like it just, it's very inspiring. So, um, one of the things that he said is it doesn't have to be that way. Like Mercury retrograde is an invitation for us just to do our diligence, you know, to be more careful, to, you know, check the episode that we're uploading and make sure it's the right one and check the episode. You know, it's the details. It's like check on the details and and become more diligent in the details. That's all it is. It doesn't have to make things go wonky. However, when things do go wonky, I like blaming it on it. You know, it's just fun. It just, it takes all the pressure off. It takes the seriousness off of me. So last night we did a really cool thing. We actually went to a friend's house for a sound bath healing. Uh, if you don't know what a sound bath healing is, it's basically um, a person who brings sound bowls. They can be crystals. They can be copper made of different modalities and they do frequency tuning. So basically they go into like the frequency of the earth. They, you know, create these sounds of the frequency of the earth. And what it does is it reconnects your body to the higher frequencies and you lay there in meditation. We had a cacao ceremony to start and I don't know a lot about cacao. In fact, it's the very first time I've ever even drank it or did a ceremony, but it was cool because we wrote down the things we wanted to release. And of course it was on the day of the eclipse, which is a great time to release things and manifest new things. You know, if you use the energies of, of the, you know, the outer energies, the energies that feel a little non-physical, the planetary energies, just the, you know, just using everything that you can to wrap your belief system around things working out for you, I find a lot of benefit in that. It's not, to me, it's not woo-woo. It's like, you know, if I believe that this eclipse is going to, you know, help me to release something or help me to introduce something, then boom, it is because our beliefs create, right? So we wrote down the things that we wanted to release. We burned them in the fire and then we drank cacao and cacao is supposed to have these incredible properties and you can look it up. Uh, where it really kind of blisses you out and really has a lot of nutrients in it and things like that. So we did that. And I had my whole family, not my whole family, but I had my family here in California. My two younger daughters came with my husband and I, and it was really cool. It was the first time, and I've done a lot of sound bath healings, but it was the first time that I ever did one where I had no agenda. I had no agenda for my daughters. I had no agenda for my husband. I had no agenda for myself. I just laid there and I let the vibrations do their work. And I literally could feel my body vibrating. And that was really cool. Um, a lot of times I'll get caught up if my husband like starts snoring or something and I just want to elbow him. And I just let all of that go. In fact, he didn't snore, which is funny because uh, I let it go. So uh 
that kind of stuff is really cool. That kind of stuff can really help you to integrate energies, to up-level your energy field. So doing little things like that is fun. And it was um, awesome to do that with my kids as well. Cool that they're into that sort of stuff. And my friend has a beautiful home. And the woman who did the ceremony, her name is Sheila. She was incredible. And she was a great facilitator. And uh, she was really good at the frequencies. So that was amazing. All right. So... One of the things that came to me, we were in a conversation about this, you know, the very first thing was like this idea of releasing expectations. So that's something new that I've it kind of been implementing when it comes to things like, you know, the sound bath healing or my massage lately. I've been getting, I found a new massage therapist and he's very quiet and I really like that. And uh, he told me that sometimes he's too quiet for people. And I thought, I always want to ask questions during massage. I want to find out what they're doing and what's wrong with my body. I realized with him that you're just in the problem when you're doing that. You're activating more of the problem. If you can just breathe and let yourself be in the moment and just release and let go, you're going to have a different experience than if you're trying to make something happen or trying to fix a problem. So I was talking to Sheila yesterday and we were talking about just program junkies, you know, being a program junkie. And I think in the past, I've definitely been known to be a program junkie or a book junkie. And what that means is you're addicted to trying to fix yourself because you believe that you're not good enough, because you believe you have something wrong with you, because you believe your negative emotions, your depression, whatever is keeping you from manifesting, you believe there's something wrong with you and you have to figure it out. And that is problem energy. You're never going to find solutions from that energy. Now, it's a journey. There's a process that we go through and there's a process of awakening. So if you're in that right now with yourself and you're working with different coaches and you're reading different books and there's nothing wrong with that. But just check yourself and just check where your intentions are coming from and just check where your energy field is at. Because if you're always trying to fix yourself, you're always going to feel broken. That's the vibrational energy that you're putting out when you're always trying to fix yourself and when you're always telling yourself that you're not good enough. That is a wound. That is a social programming. And it's something that really bears looking at journaling about releasing and healing from. Because if you really want to live an incredibly fantastic life, you can't keep coming to life broken. You can't keep coming to life with all this baggage. You've got to start doing the inner healing work in order to start vibrating with a higher energy of abundance, appreciation, love, and joy. I feel like, and I know I've said this before, but I feel like I have this present. Like I have this huge package of joy and I just want to give it to every person I meet. I want to tell them the secrets. I want to tell them how to manifest. I want to tell them how to get an appreciation and love. I want to help them to stop focusing on the problems of their life so they can start focusing on what's going great and they can start activating more of that wonderful energy that allows manifestation to conduct and become. So we're going to get into the reasons today why you may be holding yourself apart. I think that is one of the number one reasons you may be holding yourself apart from manifestation because you think you're not good enough, because you think you got to work on yourself, because you think you still have a lot of things to do. Oftentimes, especially when it comes to our bigger dreams, the things that we really want to experience, We just have a belief system that's out of whack. We have a belief system and a limitation about ourselves that doesn't allow us to take those huge leaps of faith. We don't have enough trust in the universal orchestration. We don't have enough trust that we're going to be taken care of. We like to be safe in the same. You know, we like living in that little comfort zone that is actually creating a lot of misery. So I'm going to tell you how to do the big quantum leaps today, and I'm going to tell you how to, you know, manifest the the smaller stuff because honestly, the smaller stuff is what leads to the faith of the bigger stuff. But in order to get to the big stuff, which nothing is big, like I think Abraham Hicks says, it's just as easy to manifest a castle as a button. But the belief system is what really creates the gap. It's the gap in our belief system that we can live that in that castle you know, opposed to finding a button on the ground. All right. So you're on a journey. We're all on this journey 
of expansion and growth, and we are all in different places. And as we awaken, there's different different levels of awakening. Uh, that is my understanding. And there's the levels of awakening go from you know extreme density where you're just living in the physical experience and you feel like you have no control over anything in your lives and you're very much living in victimhood. That's like level one. And then level five is like you're awakened, you're in trust, you're in faith, you're manifesting like crazy because you're living in that co-creative partnership with the universe and you just trust and you do crazy stuff because nothing's crazy because you know you're going to be supported. You know that things are going to work out for you. You kind of have this, it's more than a belief. It's a strong field of knowing. And when you have a strong field of knowing, so basically the quantum field is that field around you. So the field around you is called the quantum field. And in the quantum field is basically everything that comes to you. So it's all the people, all the circumstances, you know, the car, the house, the kids, the the spouse, the boyfriend, the girlfriend, all of that stuff is in your quantum field. Even people in traffic are in your quantum field. So every experience that you have is based on that vibrational quality that you bring to the table, that vibrational alignment. I've talked about this before. If you have cranky people in your experience and you're feeling cranky all the time, you got to check on that state, that mood, that energy that you're getting up with every day and you're beaming a signal to. The field will always tell you. So if you're... um, if you're if you get yourself into a place where you understand that your growth and expansion are your friends and they're going to lead you to more and you not being perfect right now is really good and you even being in some negative emotion right now is good because it leads you to desire it leads you to clarity it leads you to living life through more energy fields because if we're just in minutia if we're just waking up every day and we're feeling okay we're not really conducting a lot of energy. So I'm going to teach you today how to shift into those higher energy fields so that you can wake up tomorrow and feel really excited about your life. All right, so negative emotion is your gift. It's not something to fix and it's not something to run from. It is our tendency to want to fix it. It is our tendency to want to run from it. It's our tendency to want to distract ourselves from it because we don't like it. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to be sad. It doesn't feel good to be mad. It doesn't feel good to be depressed, right? But the truth is your negative emotion is what really gives you an indication that your life needs to change, that you need to do something different because you're not living in your preferences. You're not living in love and appreciation and joy. So it helps you to clean up those things and start to direct your energy in the focus of what you want. Where people get tripped up is that negative emotion. They let them take that. They let them take that out. They let them take it out. Take them out, and you know they just live in misery. We know a lot of people like this, and they live in victimhood, and everything is happening to them and not for them. So there's like you know these little shifts that we can make that will literally help us to manifest more appropriately in the direction of the things we want to create. Okay, so you're having trouble manifesting. Is that what I'm hearing? (laughs) I'm doing this show today not because I'm having trouble manifesting. I have no trouble manifesting whatsoever, but I do wake up like a bouncing bunny every day. Like I'm, for the most part, I have a level of excitement throughout my day because I'm a creator and I love to create. I've got, I actually came up with a new idea today and I'll share it on the show uh, because I want to see what kind of interest my new idea has. Let me just... Let me mark that down so I don't lie and I remember to um, to share that. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. So you're having trouble manifesting. We're going to look at all the different ways you may be having trouble. So for the most part, one of the biggest things that we have to pay attention to and we have to get better about is what is our state? What is the frequency that we are dialing into every day? How are we waking up every day? How are we going to sleep every day? How are we, you know, what are the the thoughts that we're having right before we fall asleep? Or what are the thoughts we're having in the middle of the night? Are they full of anxiety? Are they full of worry? Are they full of doubt? Are they, 
you know, just, is it kicking your butt in the middle of the night? Are you listening to that shitty committee too much? Is that what's happening? Because we got to clean that stuff up. Um, so every day, if you're waking up every day in misery, it's okay. First of all, it's okay. I want to shift that for you today, but I also want you to recognize that all that misery and all the ways that you've been feeling lately and all the lack that you've been giving to your experience. So basically when we're in misery, we're in lack of our desires. Okay. So we're separating ourselves from the dream because we don't believe we can attain it. So we're in the lack and guess what? Different vibrations, your dreams up here, your lacks down here. So you're not going to be able to manifest it. That's the biggest thing. You got to start asking yourself, where is the gap between what I want and what I'm doing? Where's the gap? Because I've got to elevate myself to feel a feel a that this is possible and B that I'm activating enough energy to get excited about it and to feel like it's coming right? That expectation. So if you're waking up every day miserable, what's happening is you're creating a stronger desire for it. So it's okay. Um, We actually call that nails in the coffin in our house. So when there's nails in the coffin, I've talked about this often where we were in Connecticut and we wanted to live in California and every snowstorm was nails in the coffin. Like that winter, I think my car got buried a few times, like couldn't even see the car. We didn't have a garage. We had to sweep off all the cars. I think we had four cars at the time, three cars, and had to shovel out the driveway because the driveway was too short. We had to shovel all the plowed stuff from the road off the driveway. And it was, you know, a four hour experience. And we just got to the point where I was like, oh my gosh, the more this happens, the faster I'm going to manifest it because my strong, my desire is just getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So if things are getting worse and worse and worse, a couple of things. One, your desire is getting stronger, so it's good. Another thing is you may get to the point where things get so bad that you're just going to drop it. You're going to quit. You're going to walk away. You're going to leap in faith. You're going to move. You're going to do what you say you want to do. Because it becomes, life becomes so hard that you can't keep doing it. So pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. So it's okay if you're in misery. But just know this. If you are in misery every single day, your manifestational energies are slowing down. Your desire is speeding up, yes. So that helps. But your ability to connect with and align with that dream is it's off. It's slow. It's going to be, it's going to take, it's, it's just, it's like walking in the other direction of where you want to go. So you don't want to be in it too much. If you can shift and you can start to uh, just make these little millimeter shifts where um, I've got some mantras for you today to interrupt that stinking thinking. And if you can do things like meditation and listening to your intuition and watching the energy field and looking for signs and symbols, then you're going to start to activate energy differently than if you're just sitting there watching TV and being sad. All right. So work on softening your constant negativity. And this is how you do that. You start through meditating. Hello, you better have a meditation practice. If you don't, that's why the manifesting isn't working because you need to create space between this monkey mind and the truth of who you are. That truth of who you are gets stronger and stronger the more committed you are to quieting your mind. So meditating, appreciation, finding something to be grateful for, waking up every day, looking at the sky. I mean, it's spring. So everywhere around us, there's flowers, right? I would think so. Flowers and sunshine and blue sky and beauty and grass coming up good, good stuff, birds singing. This is all little things you can do to appreciate, to find gratitude. Um, If you have a favorite thing in the morning, like your coffee, the smell of your coffee. Um, If you have a pet, it's wonderful. I love, I love, love, love my cat. I love when my cat sits on me. It's just like, I just feel so loving. I feel so good. I feel so, um, so, so worthy and so needed when they do that because they don't do it. I mean, they, they do do it every day but it's wonderful when they do it. So those little things that we take for granted that could become a vibrational standpoint that could actually make the bigger things more possible, that can make the bigger things make us closer to the bigger things because we're not in the low frequencies of misery and looking at the problem all the time. 
All right. So when I wanted to move, okay, so when we were working to move from Connecticut to California, there was a four-year process that I went through. I don't believe it has to take that long. I was, you know, had just learned about law of attraction. I was implementing it in my life in a lot of ways, in the small ways. I was visualizing like crazy. Um, I actually had a, a couple that we were talking to and they wanted to move to California too. So we were masterminding. We were pretending. We were acting as if. I was seeing signs everywhere. Uh, and one year... <laughs> I threw out my winter clothes, acting as if to find myself there the next winter. And I believe the reason why, first, I believe there is a readying process. I believe there's a process we need to go to to be ready for these giant leaps of faith and these journeys that we take. I also believe it had to get really bad before we would make this giant decision. <clears throat> you know, we had to get to the point where it was like, we couldn't do it anymore. We couldn't live there anymore. We didn't want to live there anymore. It got so uh, dense. The energy got so dense. So remember, when the energy gets really dense and things get really hard and you're feeling really, you know, up against it, that's when things are about to break. That's when things are about to turn. And what actually happened was, you know, in the course of those four years, now we were doing things, right? We were visualizing, we were talking about it. I was meditating to the ocean waves. I was getting in joy a lot. I was, you know, dancing to shoveling the snow. I was, high, you know, I was snuggling with my cats a lot. I was doing the things that I knew would raise my vibration every single day so I could start vibrating with living a dream life in California. So, we and we visited. We actually came out and visited, and I won the lottery to pay for the tickets to come here, which was amazing. I won like a thousand dollars. It paid for our plane tickets. So we came out and we scouted it. It was like one of the greatest vacations of our life. And we came home and nothing happened. We didn't make any connections. We had like one friend here. But one thing that happened when we got here and when we vacationed here was our vibes raised. We felt the energy of the place. In fact, one of the women that was showing us around saw us a couple days in and she said, you guys look like you already live here. Like you feel like California. And that was the coolest thing. And then we got the visualizations even stronger and could feel ourselves living here. I can still feel that today. When I go to Laguna Beach and I sit on a bench, I can still feel what I felt back then thinking, could this be my home? Could this be a place I visit on a weekly basis? And it totally is. I was just there on Saturday. So um, so pretty cool. So that's what happened. It fueled our desire even more. It created even more energy. So if you want to go somewhere, work on that plan. Work on taking a couple of days to go there to feel what the energy is like so that your visualizations can be even more powerful. Remember, you got to feel it to align with it. So then, you know, over the course of time, nothing's happening. We're going through winter. It's getting denser. There's more snow. We're more uncomfortable. And we get a letter from the court saying that they're going to foreclose on our house after five years. And they're, you know, there's a court date and they want us to come to it. And that's when we just decided, I don't want to live like this. We can't live like this anymore. This is crazy. You know, and if we do end up getting kicked out of our house, which I had set a very strong intention that I would give the house back, which I did. Um, if that did happen, I was not moving in Connecticut again. I was not going to take my stuff and put my tail between my legs and put my head down in shame and have a sign in my yard. I was like, we are going for it. So with that decision, you know, became a huge leap of faith. We booked plane tickets. We put a number on it, how much we wanted to make. Jobs came like crazy. We sold things. I mean, the energy just started to ramp up so much. And I'm not going to say we weren't in fear. We had massive amounts of fear. We were leaving the only home we have ever known. We were leaving every friend and every family member, you know, that we knew to go to a land that we knew really literally like nothing about. When we visited, though, my husband visited Newport and he saw the homes and he saw New England style homes. And that's what made him go, I can do this. I can do this there. So that was pretty cool. You know, that was like the universe giving us a solid, right? <clears throat> so 
You got to, you got to, you got to amp up the energy. You got to do whatever you can. Look online. I was constantly looking at apartments online. I was talking to the two friends that I had in California on a weekly basis, writing down high schools, writing down areas, writing down potentials. Uh, I waited till I got here to get an apartment because I didn't feel like I could do that from not seeing where we were because I really needed a feeling and a sense of safety. And I really needed my girls not to feel like I'm a minority. You know, there's a lot of diversity in California that's not here in Connecticut. So I needed to be sure that they were going to be in a good, safe place. And we nailed it. Like, I love where we live. I absolutely love it. All right. So for those four years, you know, I went through a lot of miserable states and I definitely felt hopeless and trapped a lot because A, we didn't have the money. You know, the money wasn't there. We were just recovering from all of the bankruptcies and all of that. So we didn't even really have credit cards. And we were just, my husband was just starting to rebuild his business, which people thought we were nuts for leaving because he had just rebuilt. He had just recovered And he was like, I can do this anywhere. And that's an amazing and incredible person to have that belief. And I'm fortunate because we both, you know, we both have that belief system, which is amazing. And which is why it manifested so, so incredibly. Like when he's decided that he was going to have his own business, we were just talking about this with our neighbors um, the other night. When he decided he was going to have his own business because the guy that he was working for, he wasn't making enough money with him and he was amazing to us, but it was time. Like it was time for him to get his license and to do the things he that he came here, that he set out here to do. And he put up an ad on Facebook and literally from that day, which is about, geez, five or six years ago, I think we're coming up on seven years six years ago, like he has not had a break in his schedule. He is constant. He's actually, he turns work away very often because there's so many people here and they're always looking for really good, loyal, you know, contractors that they can trust. And he has an incredible personality and a really good vibe and he's really good at what he does. So that's amazing. Like talk about abundance and flow of energy and flow of abundance into our lives and him doing what he's really good at and really crafted at. All right. So the times that I have manifested the easiest and the quickest was when I have gotten out of the problem. So you got to ask yourself, are you in the problem? Are you in the energy field of this isn't working? Are you in the lack? Are you in the misery? Because you have to remember your state, your mood, your alignment on things. And I'm going to go through the different ways that we do this. Your alignment on things is what actually creates. So I had to get out whenever I do this, whenever I get out of the problem and I go, I can't wait to see what manifests from this. And I kind of get a little bit of excitement about it, even if it's a huge problem. I manifest super quick because it speeds up the energy because you're in the faith field. Your quantum field is wrapped in faith. It is infused in faith. It is activated in faith. And you've got the energy field of clarity of knowing that there's universal orchestration, that you have a co-creative partnership. So that is always the way. Then I just, you know, I create the space. When I say I can't wait to see what manifests from this, I create the space and I get out of anxiety and I just settle and I go, I'm watching the energy field. That's what I'm going to do because the energy field is what's going to tell me what to do next. And then I'm very good at listening to my intuition. So if it says do this, call this person, do that, I follow the intuition. Super important. And then just being, you know, wholeheartedly in solution mode, just knowing that the solutions are coming and working to interrupt any level of anxiety that could cause misery or could cause me to be in the opposite direction of what I'm looking to create. If you are in the problem, if you're in the worry, if you're in the anxiety, notice what your mind is doing because it's going to go to worst case scenarios. It's going to go to the what ifs. And I could catch myself as as soon as two weeks ago doing this. And my daughter will always remind me, mom, why do you do that? I'm like, you're right. It's a tendency. I'm working on it. And the faster you can recognize it and the faster you can shift it, the faster you're going to be in solution mode. So it's stopping yourself from that tendency of, oh, I don't want this to happen or I'm worried that this is going to happen. All of that stuff 
it does the opposite. It slows the energy down and it may not cause that stuff to manifest, but it will make it harder for what you're looking to manifest to happen. All right. So this is all about, you know, there's different levels of awakening to living. There's the different levels of awakening. Being a really solid and master manifester means you have to get out of victimhood. You got to stop blaming people. You got to stop blaming yourself. You got to stop blaming the energy field. You got to stop blaming the injustices of the world. You got to get off the news. You got to get out of that negative frequency that tells you that you have no control, that you have no power over your life. So completely letting go of victimhood, releasing feelings of injustice, and just working from excitement, working from your belief that you're going to be able to do this because you have this non-physical support. You have non-physical guidance. Don't forget about that. There is a whole world out here that wants to be invited in and wants to help you in your manifestations. And know this, gosh, if you have the desire in your heart, you have the ability to manifest it. That is like one of my favorite things to know because Like if you want to get really deep here, if you have a desire in your heart, if you can see something, if you can visualize something, there are people who say it's actually happening in a parallel universe. And as soon as you align with the energy and start acting as if, you you become it. It's like, and that's, you know, that's super deep stuff. But just know that desire is an indication of the energy field calling you in a certain direction, calling you towards your dreams. You know, if you're, so one of the things that we had to do, especially with the house foreclosure, we had to get out of the injustices of the economy, boom, you know, taking a dive. We had to get out of that. And I know a lot of people are probably starting to have a lot of fear of that. I'm watching that. I'm seeing that, you know, people are calling it. They're saying that it's going to happen again. And the truth is, it could happen again, absolutely, in the world that we live in, there are cycles and whatever. But if you are not in alignment with the powerlessness, if you're not in alignment with the victimhood, if you're not in alignment with the shame, the regret, the guilt, all of that stuff, you're going to breeze through it a lot easier. I feel like we are in such, and my husband is in the industry that is normally very affected by this economic stuff. And we don't have a lot of concerns. We're ready. We're prepared. We've we've created a strong enough field of abundance that we feel very powerful stepping into whatever. But whatever comes into your field is what you are creating. So, you know, that foreclosure, that bankruptcy, all that stuff that we went through, I can tell you exactly why we needed to go through that and what it did for our expansion and growth and how we were able to shift those feelings going through it. We went through it twice. We went through, you know, just being really tight and really, I mean, probably even three times because before we manifested the first time our house and the business really, you know, becoming a $3 million business before we did that, you know, we were living paycheck to paycheck. I was bouncing checks, you know, the whole thing. And as we grew, we didn't know how to manage it. And our, our energy was all over the place and we didn't understand law of attraction. So it was a process. It was a journey and one that I'm really thankful for. And I'm really proud to say, hey, you know, we went through this economic shitter. We went through foreclosure and bankruptcy and we made it out and our credit scores are amazing now and we're doing really well. Like to me, that's like victory, right? In its expansion and growth. So you got to get out of those lower fields of feeling shame or feeling guilt or feeling like that regret, like, we, you know... We weren't supposed to go through that. It's all our fault. We didn't save. We didn't. And I'm not, I'm not going to do that. I don't think I ever did that. I did feel a a certain level of shame for sure. Uh, But I'm over it. I'm obviously because I talk about it. All right. So you can't expand and grow into a strong manifester if your tendency is to be in these lower vibrational energies. So if you're waking up every day and you're really having a hard time with your mood and you're really having a hard time feeling excited about life, you got to work on that. And I'm going to show you a couple ways you can do that. You got to take responsibility. You got to take full on responsibility and ask yourself, what can I do? What can I do to improve my life, even in the smallest incremental ways to start 
that engine, to start that incremental shifting up that ladder so I can get into these higher frequencies and become more. Uh, so here's some things you can you can do. Here's some things that we did. Can I sell stuff? You know, we all have a house full of things that we probably are not using and don't need. Can I sell stuff? That's what I did. I sold a whole house full of furniture. We lived in that house for 10 years. We had been together for 20 at that point. So we had collected a lot of stuff. And, you know, a lot of it was nostalgic. I am really... I'm the kind of person where I'm very present and I'm very oriented in now. So I was able to really release stuff, but I went through grief. I definitely went through grief, letting go of my old furniture. I had childhood furniture I had to let go of, stuff that was just wrapped in energy that probably wasn't even good to have around me. I had to release. I had to let go of. And what I noticed, which was really cool, is every person who came to our house to buy stuff was really excited about it. And it was stuff that I was no longer excited about. So that was fun. That was a really fun energy to be like, oh, this person's going to love this stuff. They're going to love my stuff. And that's cool. Can I research? Can I go online? Can I sign up for apartments? That's what I did. I signed up for like this apartments.com and they would send me apartments all the time. So I would look to see what's out here and I would get excited about it. Can I visualize and feel? Can I listen to the ocean waves? Can I can I see a scene in my mind? Can I visit that place so I can get the feeling of the vibration? Um, if you're trying to start a business or something, it's like, can I build a website? Can I look at people that are doing what I want to do? Oftentimes when it comes to like doing a business, especially like if you're trying to do an online business or a coaching business or something like that, you'll look online and you'll get discouraged because you'll go, everybody's doing this. Like everybody's a life coach. Everybody's a nutrition coach. But this is the thing about that. Maybe a lot of people are, but there's a lot of freaking people in the world. And there's a lot of people in the world that need what you have to say, that need what your information is going to bring to them. And oftentimes when we have um, skills, when we have these valuable, this valuable information and we've walked through journeys before other people, we have what they don't have. And we kind of take our information and what we know for granted. So it's important to remember that, that there are people who are at the beginning of your journey who need what you you have to tell them, who need the information and the uh, inspiration and the motivation and the accountability and the guidance and support. So there are people out there. So don't get discouraged by how many people are doing it because it's energetic. And if you believe that you can do this, if you believe that you have value, if you believe you have something to share and you do it, you will be met in the energy fields. But you may need to clean some things up along the way, for sure, especially if you've got a feeling that you're not good enough. I would highly recommend my episode on that, which um, there's a few of them on worthiness. And just go back and look through the old episodes. You are not broken. That's one. And do the healing work. All right. Can I let go of misery and lack? So this is an interrupting game. And if you don't have a meditation practice, it's going to be harder. So you've got to look at the, the ways you're putting yourself in misery, the ways that you're putting yourself in lack. If you're looking at someone who's living what you want to live and you're feeling really jealous and you're throwing shade at them, that you're you're in separation. If you see people that are living abundance, that are living what you want to live and you get excited about it because it's in your field, because it's evidence to you that it's possible and it exists and it's in your it's in your world, it's in your field, then you're you're more in alignment. You're getting closer. Can I talk and act as if? So I told you we were actually working with this energy healer and she had a husband and they wanted to um move here too. And so we had like this group that on um, texting and we would talk about what it was like to already live there. And we would say, Hey, do you want to go to Malibu for lunch or, you know, silly things like that. And I know Mike Dooley talks a lot about this. Um, they do the tut, the tut quotes every day, but he's got, Mike Dooley's got infinite possibilities as one of his books. And, uh, manifesting change. And they had created that t-shirt company and they would always talk and act as if like they would get really excited if the phone rang and they would talk and act as if. And uh, we have a couple of examples of that too, where my husband like 
was pretending in a group that he answered the phone and somebody gave him a trip to Hawaii. And then like weeks later, someone gave us a trip to Hawaii. So this stuff really works. And if you talk as if, and you visualize and you feel, you become, that's what identity creation is. You're actually becoming, you're becoming more. Can I at all feel as if I'm if that I'm like achieving this, can I at all feel like this is possible for me? You've got to get rid of the limitations. You know, your mind is going to keep you safe in the same. Your mind's going to tell you why you can't do it. You got to check in on those excuses. And if you're doing a lot of yeah, buts, you're, you're, you're using excuses. And those excuses are full of vibration. They're full of, al- they're full of an alignment that is not of what you want to create. So you got to stop with the excuses. You got to interrupt those things and start reminding yourself of why it's possible. Well, I saw this person do it. If he can do it, I can do it. I've seen, I've seen speakers and I'm just like, okay, yeah. I can do this. I can do this. I know that I'm good. I know that I'm better than that, right? And it's not a competition, but it's just looking and it's going, oh, they're doing that? All right, I can do it too. And just believing in yourself, having a little shred of belief in yourself goes a long way. And then pumping yourself up along the way by interrupting those things that are trying to keep you apart. Where in my life does this manifestation show up? Is there room for it? So this is really important. Because I notice when people have split energy on stuff. So if you're you're interested in getting in a relationship, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. If you're interested in getting in a serious relationship, but you are constantly traveling for work, so you're hardly ever home, you're kind of in split energy. It's going to be hard to manifest that relationship. And uh, you can believe, well, I'm going to stop traveling when I meet that person. But the truth is you don't have room for your life. You don't have room in your life for that person. If you don't have time for a significant relationship, you can't get the significant relationship and make the time. You've got to create the space, right? You got to create a little vacuum. You got to open up the space. Um, eating. If you want to lose weight, are you constantly eating crappy, low vibrational food? It's split energy. You're telling a different story. You've got to make solid decisions around that eating and clean up your emotional eating patterns by journaling instead of eating, by going for a walk, by distracting yourself. This is with any addiction. We have these well-run neural pathways, and if we don't work on them, we are constantly going to be in an addicted state where we get those hormone downloads and we allow ourselves the rewards that we don't want that are that we're feeling very negative about. So when it comes to emotional eating or emotional drinking or the things that we're doing that are not helping us with weight loss or health, we've got to take that shit out. We got to just say, you know what, I'm not doing that anymore. I like in the last year, I would say I completely stopped eating crap. And that includes um, fast food, which I really don't eat fast food. I was like an In-N-Out burger. If you've never had that, it's really good. It's in California. I would do In-N-Out burger like once a month, maybe once every two months. I stopped doing that. I stopped eating things like potato chips. I stopped um, eating candy. Oh my gosh. I just realized this the other day. So ever since I had Valley Fever, which was a few weeks ago, I my whole thing changed. I stopped I stopped tracking my food. I'm still working out. I love working out. I'm just eating intuitively and I'm eating really whole and healthy food. Like I'm just not attracted to crappy food. Like something happened in my, I think it was the density. Like I lifted a bunch of heavy energy. And if you haven't listened to that show, I think it was episode 59 where I tell the story of doing some real deep emotional work on some family wounds. And um, ever since then, it's like I had this belief I couldn't lose weight there for a little bit. And I was working out like crazy and I was tracking my food and I was completely obsessed, obsessed to the point of like creating misery. And I let it all go. I just freaking let it all go. So the other day I realized, and and I've lost, like I'm shrinking, like I feel like I I don't feel bloated anymore. I feel wholesome. I feel healthy. I feel good. And I just literally just eat very intuitively. And I know how to eat, so it makes it easier. Uh, We're pretty healthy eaters anyways. Um, But I do let myself have like gelato. We had gelato on Saturday. It was wonderful and I felt no guilt and I felt, you know, just wonderful from it. Um, But we used to do that weekly and we don't do that anymore. So 
I was noticing, you know how you like go into places and they have like a, like a, I'm gonna, you're going to catch yourself on this. They have like a thing of candy, you know? So I walked into the post office and this has happened to me a few times. There was one, it was the cleaners and the other one was the post office and they had like Rolos, right? And I, I looked at it and I realized my tendency is always to eat that stuff, to grab one, to grab two even, to grab two, put one in my purse for later, right? And just have this yummy treat throughout my day. But what happens is, and what I've noticed for myself is that tends to wake up my sugar monster. I really do believe I have a little sugar monster. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to do that. So the other day I, I looked at the candy and I thought about, and I was like, no, I'm not doing that. And then it happened a couple of other times and I'm like, wow, as you interrupt that tendency, it gets less and less where you'll look at that candy dish and it won't even occur to you to take one. It's just a training. It's like a training for your mind. And it's a decision to no longer eat emotionally or unconsciously. I feel like I used to do that unconsciously. It's like, oh, there's candy there. I'm going to take it and pop it in my mouth, right? Perfect. But I do feel like the underlying part of that was really working on the emotional field and releasing a lot of energy, a lot of self-hatred, a lot of forgiveness happened uh, in that episode that I shared in the last few weeks. Okay. So is there room for it? Um, if you want to make friends, are you doing stuff to do that? Or are you just staying in your house? I've had the, cr- we've had the craziest thing happen. So we've lived in our house for five years and we have a great neighborhood. We love our neighbors, but it's a hello. It's a hello, a goodbye. And recently our whole life has opened up and um, our, we've been to three different neighbors' houses. One neighbor, super excited about, I'm actually going to start a podcast with. So we've been talking about some really cool and exciting stuff and I just love her and she's so brilliant and she's going to bring so much to the table and we're going to, I'm not going to tell you what it's all about, but it's going to be fantastic for a certain certain group of people. So I've been hanging out with her a lot, which is great. Like I literally on Saturday took my coffee, walked over to her house, walked inside and it was great. It was like, this is so cool. Like I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood like that. So then our other neighbors, I always get their paper and their mail when they go away and they're so sweet. They invite us over for dinner. We had a steak dinner. And then my other neighbors, my husband just did a big job for them. He put in a huge, amazing sliding door and we had dinner with them the other night and it was hilarious. Like our jaws hurt from laughing. And I'm like, these people have literally, like I can look over my fence and see their backyard. They have lived this close to us for this long. And we finally got to know them and how they met in their family. And it was just so fun. So um, what can you do? What can you do to create friendships? Can you join meetup groups? Can you can you go to places where there are people that you want to resonate with? My daughter just went to a retreat, a spiritual retreat, and she met some of the most fantastic people. She's like, these are friendships for life now. So can you do things like that that will create? And I said to her, I said, honey, you haven't had this sense of community probably since we you lived in Middlebury, Connecticut, which is a long time for her because she moved to Arizona a few years before us. So to have that sense of community and love and support and and being seen, she said, mom, I feel like it's the first time I've ever really been seen by people. And I thought, how beautiful is that? She did that. Like she made a commitment to that spiritual retreat. She, she raised the money. She got herself there. She got her daughter taken care of for the weekend. It's possible. She's a single mom. It's possible. And she's been through a lot of stuff. So it's possible for you as well. All right. Are you wanting abundance? Okay. Guess what? You feeling broke? Are you feeling constricted? Are you scared to spend money? Do you feel like there's never enough? You're not making room for it. You're not making room for the abundance. You got to focus on what feels abundant in your life. You got to sometimes let the money flow out so it will flow in. Sometimes you got to spend it and sometimes you got to, not sometimes, but all the time, you got to feel good about spending it. You know, recently, one of the things I've cleared up in this last year is when things happen, you know, like my daughter had to get her brakes done today and um, I'm going to have to get my brakes done soon too. That used to cause a little angst in me. Yeah. I have a lot of um, no interest credit cards that just make life very easy. So I have a no interest credit card for our car stuff. So I just put on that credit card and I just pay whatever I need the minimums to pay it off before interest comes. So I love that because I don't feel like I got to take this huge chunk out of our lives, which we could, we could, maybe I'll change that. I don't know. Another thing I've been doing recently, as soon as the bills come, I pay them. 
like that. Ooh, that feels so good. I just love that feeling because then I don't have to think about what day it is and when it's due and then be late with it. So that's amazing to be able to do that. And I'm very blessed to be able to do that. But we have literally worked on our abundance through the years to get out of this feeling of brokenness, to not let our bank accounts train our vibration, to not take that negative balance and make it who we are, but instead allow it to up our vibration, to create stronger desire and to have us go for it. What can we do? What can I create? Do you know how many programs I've created because we've had a bill due? <laughs> like these ideas just come and I'm like, okay, all right, that much money, let's go, right? So there's ways to do it. And if you've got an idea and you're sitting on it, get off of it and get it out into the world because the world needs it. If you have that idea, it means there is a need for it. It means there is the ability to create from it. All right. So go visit, go visit that place. If you want to move, if you're doing nothing about wanting to move, guess what? Nothing's moving. That was me for four years. And I do believe there was a readying process, but I can see now so clearly how we kept ourselves apart from it. Go visit, look at houses, put your house on the market, uh, put your house up for, for rent. I had a friend do that. He moved from Massachusetts, they rented their house and moved out to California. It's always possible. And then you got to, you got to do a little leap in faith. Some, you know, put a number on it. How much money do we need to move? You know, make a solid, even if you have never been able to save money in your life, which was us, you can do it. Put a number out there and then watch because the miracles are coming. Things are going to happen. Start selling stuff. Start getting a flow of money in and what the other thing that we did at that point was we kind of stopped spending money so much. Like we kind of just like if things, you know, we were like, well, we're moving. So why would we buy something for the house? That was the kind of thing. Cause I like to buy things for the house, you know? Um, so we, we kind of like, you know, brought the, brought the spending down because we had a goal because we had a goal in mind and you know, whatever that leap of faith is booking those plane tickets, telling people you're going that I do caution that though. Because if you share it with family members or friends, they might get sad. I had one friend who got really sad when I told her we were moving. We waited a really long time to tell our family. Like we were we were very close to leaving before we told our family because we knew they weren't going to be happy about it. And we really didn't want to hear about why they thought we shouldn't go. <laughs> In fact, it was funny. My aunt, who I just adore, I thought she was going to be upset with us because, you know, our family was close and we had a lot of holidays together. and We were very close to her. And she said to me, she goes, you know what? We were sitting there at the pizza restaurant and she goes, good for you. She goes, you know, I wanted to move to California and I never did. And I was like, you did? I didn't know this. So that was really awesome that she told me that because she was like, go for it. And she actually was kind of the last person I thought that would say that. Because she had lived in Connecticut her whole life, or she lived in New York and then Connecticut. So I didn't think that she would be the one who would be like, go for it. So that was cool. And it actually told me how I really felt inside. So people will reflect that, remember. But you can tell people you don't really, you know, doesn't really, they're not going to try to talk you out of it. It's just like, oh, yeah, I'm moving there. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm not sure when, you know, we're getting all the things together. That's what I used to say. We're lining up the job and the house and all that stuff. You got to get yourself excited. You got to get yourself activating energy. All right. So I want to talk about hitting plateaus because right before I did the show, I had somebody post that and I, this show might actually go over today. Oh, yeah, it might. It's a good show though. We got a lot of good information on this one. All right. So if you're hitting plateaus, Look at your feelings. So plateau basically means you feel like nothing's manifesting. You're in this solid vibration of just being okay. And, you know, maybe your finances are just like kind of getting you by and you're just like in this, guess what? It's fine. It's totally fine because it's in those energy fields that things are starting to ramp up where your desire is starting to ramp up. And you're recognizing now when you're in a plateau where before you didn't even know you were, you were just like, whatever, life is coming at me and I'm just dealing with it. So recognizing that is great, but look at your feelings and how you are greeting and getting up every day. How are you greeting people? How are you greeting your day? How are you setting up your field of energy for the day? What's your state? What's your mood? You got to shake things up. 
You got to do something that infuses excitement. You got to do something that infuses joy. You got to do something that gives you a little step in the direction of your dreams. And I gave you that list. Research, look things up, spend time thinking about it, spend time talking about it, spend time feeling excitement for it. Oh my goodness, when we live there, we're going to go to the beach every day. (laughs) You don't. You say you will. I'm very committed. I go to the beach once a week, usually. Um, But, you know, it's easy. Life does get in the way. There have been times where I haven't been to the beach in a month. But for the most part, it's like, oh, we're going to go see the sunset or we're going to go to Disney World or, you know, we're going to we're going to have a garden or we're going to have a swimming pool or just talk as if and get excited. You might feel silly at first, but this is the stuff that activates energy in your field. Shaking things up, do things that shift energy. So we went to that sound bath. Talk about a release of energy. I slept like a baby last night. And today, both my daughter and I, I haven't talked to my husband yet, but both my daughter and I felt just waking up in gratitude, feeling really good, feeling really positive about life. Like that was the shift of the energy field that was like super productive. Gratitude will always get you there. Doing things, doing different things, you know, like going to concerts. Um, we're, we're a little bit like really in love with going to concerts. We're like, which concerts can we go to now, you know, because I love live music. We both love live music. So it's like, and we haven't been able to do that for a while, right? Uh, so do things that really activate that joy, or maybe you're out of your comfort zone, something different, like, hello, a hip hop class. I got to tell you the last time I went to the hip hop class, I had a blast. Yeah. I kind of like stopped caring what people think. And I started to get a little silly and I started laughing. And I think my daughter and I are the ones, cause these people can be very serious and like, this is an adult hip hop class. Right. And, uh, we made a couple of people laugh and I thought, you know what, we're there to lighten the energy field. And to just, and it was really just one of, and it was a really small room and I got a little anxious when I got there and I just let go and it was so fun. A hip hop class. How fun is that? Doing things that are a little bit out of your comfort zone that call energy through you, that help you actually help your neural pathways to connect. It's a way to keep yourself young actually. So there's, there's a clue. And I noticed this has been the sixth or seventh class I've taken I'm getting better and better at it. I don't quite have the moves my daughter does, but I do like I'm getting the steps easier. And that just tells me that my brain is, you know, really activated and working well. So you got to do things that are different. You got to do things that shift your energy field. Meditation. Hello, please have a meditation practice. Gratitude, love, satisfaction. Oh, Satisfaction is one of those things when you feel deeply satisfied, joy is right there. It's right there. So feel satisfaction about things. Like if you, you know, if there's something that you can feel satisfied about, like maybe you got all the laundry done that day and just feel the energy of satisfaction. Maybe you made a wonderful dinner. Feel satisfied about that. Maybe you accomplished a goal in your business. You know, maybe you got another page up on your website. Maybe you researched creating a podcast. You know, the little things can create a feeling of satisfaction that helps you get out of doubt, that helps you get out of misery. Uh, Doing something creative. Uh, Creative juice is flowing. So good. Making jewelry. Um, I have a friend on Facebook called the Thrifty Buddha, and she takes clothes and repurposes them and creates with them and does different things with them. And it's super cool. Um, exercise. Hello, exercise, serotonin. I was listening to a little clip from Dr. Daniel Amen. He's like a brain doctor. And he was talking about the, um, dump of serotonin, which is the happy hormone in your system. And exercise is like the a number one thing that really does that for you organically. So move that body, whether it's yoga or walking or running or joining a gym or working out. You also want to keep yourself young. You want to keep yourself strong. Look at these guns. <laughs> you can't see those guns if you're not on YouTube. I got like, uh, what, 12 more YouTube subscribers last week because I screwed up that show and you could only hear it on YouTube. So send my YouTube to your friends. Let's get this YouTube channel going. I don't know if you know this, but like um, for the last 10 years, I've been saying I'm a YouTube sensation. So hello, let's go. I got 114 subscribers. I'm on my way. 
Uh, sound baths are amazing. Any kind of meditation, getting together with people, so good. So, so, so good. Really just a wonderful thing to do. I've realized, and if you're an introvert, maybe not so much, but I think it's good. You know, I've had kids who have had some social anxiety and whenever they just kind of force themselves to go out, they feel better for it. Sometimes they get overwhelmed and they need to kind of like back it down, but you know, just take your cues from that. But always being with people is, um, they call it limbic resonance, actually. And uh, it's a really healthy thing. And it keeps your brain young when you're in resonance with people and you're talking and you have community, you feel loved and you feel accepted. And, you know, you feed off each other's energy. Like, look at my, look at my pictures from, from, from Fun Friday. Like, Fun Friday is freaking Oh my goodness. Like it just makes life, you know, like I know every week on Friday, I can let go of everything and just have fun. It's fantastic. Cleaning stuff out of your house. If you want to move energy, clean your closet, give some stuff away, sell some stuff, clean out a cabinet, do the get energy moving in your house. You can also sage your house. You can look online for different ways to sage your house, but you can sage your house, which clears out energy, sage yourself if you need to. New events, you know, new experiences, going to a museum, going to a, a aquarium last on Saturday. It was so cool. I actually did a photo shoot with my daughter on Thursday and we went down to this beach that I haven't been to in a few years and the tide pools were amazing. So I said to my husband, I go, we have got to go to these tide pools. They're incredible. And he was like, let's do it. And so he took a half day off on Saturday, which was great. And we decided he needs to do that more. And we went down to the beach with our cousin, our wonderful cousin who's here. And uh, it was the first time he went tide pooling in California. And let me tell you, I think we saw like 25 to 30 starfish. I've never seen so many starfish. If you want to see there's pictures on Facebook, I believe I put those in Live Life Golden. And I did a little video on the starfish. Tide pooling. What a cool thing to do. So now we're talking about snorkeling, which I've never done before. And quite honestly, the kelp kind of freaks me out, but I'm just going to have to get over that. So we're going to do some snorkeling soon. So I'll have pictures of that. But right? Activating energy, doing something new. How cool is that? We live in California. We should be doing that stuff, right? So doing something different, doing something out of your comfort zone. Uh, recently I've changed some stuff in my house. I decided I wanted to go full on boho. So I started creating and decorating with some new stuff. Yes, it costs money. Yes. It's part of my abundance. And whoo, man, every time I walk into my house, I'm just like, Oh, I love it here. I love it here. It just raises my vibration to be surrounded by beautiful things. Nature, sunshine. I recently met with a naturopath doctor and he was saying like, you need at least 10 minutes of full on sunshine. And one of the things, the greatest disservices I think that have ever been made, and you can totally disagree with me if you want to, is this whole idea of skin cancer and needing to put sunblock on constantly. We need some sun on our skin. We need some vitamin D in our bodies. The vitamin D is a huge piece of an antidepressant. So that sunshine, that sun on your skin, that allowing, you know, that allowing that energy to be part of your experience and not putting some kind of chemical that blocks those beautiful vitamins is a great idea. I'm not talking about frying yourself. I'm just talking about getting some, you know, a few minutes a day of sunshine can be huge. Nature, getting out in nature. My daughter was telling me during her retreat, they had to go find something in nature that was beautiful and share it. And she said, just not being on her phone, right? She's 28 years old. So the phone's a big deal. I know I'm on my phone a lot too. Not being on her phone. Actually, I've actually from, and I'm going to recommit to this today because I kind of fell out of it from 10 to three, not on the phone. Whew, huge. Cause that's like productive time for me. So being on the phone is a huge distraction. So, you know, cutting some time out and being in nature, she said, just looking on the ground, just being with the outdoors was so different than what she normally allows herself to do. Because even hiking, even tide pooling, we got our phones out, we're taking pictures. And she was like, I left my phone in my room. Do that for a little while. Leave your phone in your room. People will get a hold of you when they need to get a hold of you. Breathing exercises are amazing. Dr. Joe Dispenza does a lot of those, but there's a lot of people online that do them as well. The thing that my naturopath just taught me was every hour doing three to five breaths where you bring in a really deep breath and you hold it for a few seconds 
and then you blow it out and you do that. What that does is it calms your automatic ner- autonomic nervous system and it allows you to settle, allows your energy to settle. It also allows you to like get out of the monkey mind, right? When you're in your breath, you're out of your monkey mind. Actual baths, love actual baths with some Epsom salts. Oh my goodness, I love my baths. I don't take them as often as I want to and I need to be more committed to that, but especially if you exercise and you have sore muscles. But baths, Epsom salt baths will actually release toxins and emotional stuff from you. So put on a good guided meditation and get in the tub. Sound baths, I love the sound bath or any kind of guided group meditate. Group meditations will take you so deep. They're so fantastic. And if you don't have one around you, maybe you can create one. Yeah, why not? You could... You could literally write down a meditation and read it, or you could put one on from YouTube. I mean, just create a group atmosphere, create a community. It's so beautiful. Dress fancy. So so the other day on Saturday, I woke up and I knew I was going to the beach and I had this cute little dress I got a while ago and I haven't been able to wear it because it's been cold out and it was like 85 degrees. And I was going over to my neighbors for coffee and I just threw on my little dress over my bathing suit and I put on this like flowy, fancy thing over it. And she's like, oh, you're so fancy today. I'm like, you know what? I just felt like being fancy. I just felt like feeling this way. So, you know, unapologetically dress a little fancy one day. I got a little dress on today. I'm like, what the hell? Why not? Right? It's warm out. I'm feeling good. I have these beautiful clothes. Why not wear them? Like, why do we always, you know? Let's up level. Let's treat ourselves. Let's let's act as if, right? Treat yourself. I don't know if you've ever seen um, Park and Rec, but they always said that. Treat yourself. They had a whole day where they would treat or treat themselves. So you know, a manicure, a pedicure, a massage. My husband just went for a pedicure with my daughter for his birthday, and he loved it. I mean, treat yourself. Get a massage. Don't be so constrictive with your finances because when you're so constrictive and you're not taking care of yourself, that tells the universe that you don't trust, that you don't believe you can. Get out of the minutia. Do something different. Refocus your intentions and focus is everything. All right, I'm going to wrap this up pretty quick because we are so over today. Okay, so the energy needs output and direction. Your energy needs output and direction. If you're not having a strong energy conduction, nothing's going to happen. So you've got to stop being humdrum, stop being wishy-washy. None of that conducts strong energy fields. You've got to focus. So if there's something you want to do, a business you want to create, a relationship you want to be in, you got to write about it. You got to act as if, you got to write stories about it. You got to get in the energy field of it. Um, Focus is everything, you guys. What you focus on expands. If you're always focusing on scrolling social media, you're not going to do much with your life. Trust me. Um, Lightheartedness, it gets you out of the problem. So lightening up. Do we have to be so serious? Do we have to be so freaking serious? No, we do not. When we're too serious, we're in the density When we're relaxing, we're in assurance, we're appreciating, we're allowing the energy field to to change, to shift, to allow us to do that. Clarity, writing, intentions. You know, writing is the strongest form of focus. So the clearer you can get about what you want to create, the better you're going to be about it. Uh, what's driving you, you know, what's the energy that's driving you every day? What decisions do you need to make? Do you need to make a decision about that freaking candy dish? I'm not eating that anymore. Do you need to make a decision about fast food? I'm not eating fast food anymore. I don't eat that stuff. When you do that and you interrupt it enough, this is with any addiction, alcohol, drugs, uh, crappy TV, porn. Apparently people are addicted to that. Never, never did that. Um, All of that stuff starts with neural pathways and programmings and you entertaining those thoughts. If you just shut it down, I don't buy potato chips. I don't eat potato chips. I don't think about potato chips because actually, if I do think about potato chips, I think about the waxy way they make my mouth feel. I just don't like the way they feel anymore because I don't eat them. So that kind of chemical stuff, I'm like, I respect my body too much to put that stuff in it. Watch the energy field for change. Super important because the energy field will start to tell you what's kicking up. Follow your intuition and uh, be careful about asking for other people's opinions. 
deciding it's possible and entertaining ways that it could happen. Just thinking about it. I don't even know what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be great. Uh, I have no idea what's going to happen, but I know it's going to be good. That's one of my favorite lines. Unlucky. Okay. So these are the, a couple of mantras that you can shift things. Like if you've always had a belief that you're unlucky here, you can shift to my luck is changing. I'm seeing my luck changing. I've seen some people doing this and I freaking love it. And you know who you are. I know how this works. I know how this works. I never really knew how this worked before. And now I know how it works. So I just have to release my negativity about it. And I just got to get into some sort of hopeful status and some kind of excitement about it. <clears throat> Getting out of lack, I know I can manifest this because I have the desire. I know I can manifest this because I have the desire. And believing is seeing. So the idea that seeing is believing is backwards. We have to believe first before we see. We have to align with the energy before it gets activated. We have to put ourselves in vibrational alignment and ask ourselves, if I was living that, who would I be? What would I do? What would I decide every day? What would my activities be every day? What would my energy field be like? Like if you were to think, oh my gosh, I won $20 million in the lottery. What do you think that person wakes up like every day? <laughs> Pretty freaking excited, I would think, right? So if you want to win $20 million, you got to start entertaining those kind of things. You got to start thinking in that way, right? Because you want to identify with that, that person. All right. So a um, lot of information. Hopefully you took some notes. Hopefully this was helpful. Let me know if you have questions. I've got my Live Life Golden group that I've now made private. There's just a couple of questions that, um, that I'm asking just to see where people are coming from. Invite people into that group because that's where I post all the shows. Share this group if you wanna um, if you wanna support it financially. I'll put the link below. It's a supercast link, just a twenty dollar donation every month to keep the show going and to show that there's that you're cre you're getting value from it. We've got a lot of listeners, and I'm excited about that. All right, so this is my idea. I'm literally just came up with this today. I've been actually been thinking about it recently. But I want to see what the interest is out there. So you can email me at livelifegolden at gmail. And i um, thinking about starting a writer's workshop. So I've written two books and I know the resistance that comes with writing. So if you have always wanted to write a book and you don't know how, and you don't even know the first steps to do it, I want you to reach out to me. I'm going to create a writer's workshop where we're going to have accountability every single day. I'll probably create a little group on Facebook. I have no details for you right now because I'm literally just running by this in my pants. But I'm um, in the process of writing a third book, and I would love the accountability myself to do that with someone. And I know there's a lot of resistance around creativity. I know there's a lot of resistance around sharing your story or putting yourself out there. There's a vulnerability that goes with writing a book. I also know how to uh, self-publish. I know how to get it up on Create Space. I know how to create the covers, and I've got people in place to help you with every element of that, the Kindle portion, the audio portion, which still working on that. Um, so I can take you from the basics of, you know, getting you through writing the story. And then I even have people that, that can help edit. Um, but my, actually my partner in M21 just wrote a book and she put it through Grammarly. And I was like, I think I found two mistakes in the whole book. So there's so many options of the ways that we can go. And I have so much information to share with you that I thought how cool a writer's workshop would be. And it'll be totally on online, on Zoom. And then who knows, maybe we'll do a retreat around it. I don't know. I'm starting to get into this retreat work and I'm freaking loving it. I actually have a retreat coming up with my founding members, the people who have gone through my groups already are going to meet in Newport, California. And I've rented this incredible beach house and we're going to do that at the end of September. And it is going to be so much fun and a lot of expansion and growth is coming from that. So, um, so there's more to come on that. Also, if you live in an area and you want to get a group of people together and you want me to fly out and do a day retreat or a weekend retreat, I can do that as well. Super excited about that. I'm probably most likely going to be in Connecticut in August. So I'm thinking about doing it in Connecticut. If you have um, connections in Connecticut with a place that I could do it at, 
definitely reach out to me. If you have a group of people, that would be awesome. Uh, A lot of good stuff coming. All right. I love you guys. Peace out. Longest show ever. Good Lord. Love it.